All right. Hi there. Um, I'm Elise Gafford. Uh, this is Vitaly Gridnev and Nikita Konovalov. Um, we're all cores on the Sahara Project, and uh, Vitaly is the current PTL uh, as of Newton, long may he reign. Um, so just to go over what we're going to be talking about today, first we're going to do a very brief overview of Sahara, what it is, what it does. Um, Vitaly is going to talk to you about some new features in Sahara this cycle, health checks, Kerberos integration. I'm going to go over some changes to the image generation capacities of Sahara, and then Nikita is going to finish off with bare metal provisioning uh, and some additional features. So, um, first off, the use cases that Sahara fulfills. Sahara is, of course, the data processing service within OpenStack. Uh, so what we do is we have a streamlined, unified API to provision clusters of popular big data processing frameworks. Um, so we have plugins for Apache Hadoop, Cloudera, Hortonworks, Mapr, uh, as well as some sort of newer entrants into the field like Storm and Spark. Um, we integrate with Heat primarily, and through that to just about everywhere else on Earth. Uh, if you ever want to test your OpenStack deployment, you may just want to run the Sahara test. We, we use just about the whole thing. Um, we then have an elastic data processing engine, um, which, you know, if you're familiar with AWS, this is something like EMR, um, <clears throat> but it's much more intended to allow you to use any data processing framework of your choice. Um, so we support, you know, Java, MapReduce, Hive, Pig, Spark, Storm, uh, just about anything you can name. Um, we allow you to create transient clusters or permanent ones, depending on your use case. Um, and for data sources, as well as being able to connect to local and external HDFS instances, you can also optionally integrate with Swift or Manila uh, if you want to store your data there instead. Uh, so this is sort of an overview of the API. Um, up there you can see that first you want to register an image, and we have a repository for that that we'll be talking about in a little while. Um, so you're going to register an image to your plugin, um, create a node group template, which is going to provide some basic configuration for each of the services that are going to make up your cluster. Um, you launch that thing, have a cluster, at which point you can register your data sources, create your job binaries, which you do just like if you were any other Hadoop dev or Spark dev or Storm dev. Uh, register those with Sahara, create a job template to allow you to configure it per run, um, and then you run it as many times as you want against your data sources uh, and glean whatever insights you're looking for. So that's basically what we do here. Um, we've already talked about the cluster provisioning plugins a little bit, um, as well as enumerated the EDP job types. Uh, we also have an image packing repository, Sahara Image Elements. We have a new framework uh, to ver validate Sahara, which is now you know, packaged and shippable to customers in its own right, uh, which we'll be talking about in a little bit. Uh, we do have a Horizon UI plugin as well as an OpenStack client plugin. So that's sort of an overview of the whole project. Um, and at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Vitaly to talk about some new features in Newton. Okay. I'd like to tell about a uh, few updates about health checks and some management improvements uh, on Sahara's side. Uh, first of all, I'd like to mention about event log for clusters. What is event log? Event log is a feature that provides you an ability to manage and understand your, uh, the, the current step of your cluster deployment. Uh, and in case of possible failures, you can understand uh, what is the reason of this failure um, with some um, stack trace or something like error ID and so on. Um, and during the, during the Newton development cycle, we did some improvements of this feature, including uh, um, uh, addition um, of this feature to clusters provisioned by Ambari uh, management framework. Uh, and we did uh, some improvements uh, in CLI uh, with support of this feature. You can dump all events and steps to have ability 
to send this information to your admin, which can help him to un probably understand what is the error during the cluster deployment. Okay, that's how it looks like. So you can see that uh, steps, few steps already completed successfully, and some of these steps are currently in progress. Uh, and this is view from CLI, and from UI it looks like this. So you have also a few steps completed, and uh, you have uh, configuring instances in progress. Um, that's how it looks like for Bram plugin, for example. Okay, let's talk, let's talk a, a little bit about health checks. Health checks are a really important topic when you manage long-living clusters. So when uh, you have a long-living cluster, it's quite important to have some monitoring service uh, to understand what is the current step uh, what is the current state of your cluster? Uh, before Liber Sahara in Liberty and previously we we didn't have this uh, we didn't have this framework to monitor your clusters. Cluster can be active always after deployment, even if uh, it uh, all infrastructure no longer exists and something like that. So uh, uh, we implemented new framework that provides the ability to manage uh, and understand cluster of, uh, manage and understand cluster health. Uh, additionally, we uh, implemented that for all plugins, but uh, it's implemented for Ambari and Cloud Air Manager uh, generally, and uh, for others plugins that uh, this feature has a little bit less availability. Um, since, you, since Newton release, uh, health checks are available for Mapper plugin. Um, additionally, you can uh, get some notifications about health from Celometer. And also, you can easy to, easy to check health if oh, okay if something was wrong five minutes ago. You can just okay probably currently cluster a little bit more healthy. We can just recheck that and how it looks like from UI. So yeah, there are all steps uh, and health checks are green and how it looks like for uh, some probably issues. So you can see that some of the, uh, some of the checks are red and probably uh, admin or user should take a look on this issue and how that's, that, that looks like from CLI. So what is the next step for health checks? So we are going to make some more detailed health checks, for example, for uh, se several date nodes or something like that, for example, to understand what's, what particular date node or slave is failed or something like that, for additional space for, in for each DFS. Um, also, we have some ideas to make some kind of actions or suggestions to repair your cluster. For, for example, in case of dead nodes, if you have failed dead node, you can just start and, re, uh, and replace that. Uh, add, or probably add new nodes or just restart services if something failed in total. Um, and probably we're going to implement some kind of more, more flexible co configuration for health checks. Uh, like a, a more advanced health checks or just disabling health checks temporarily for uh, case of maintenance for cluster or something like that. Okay, let's talk about a little bit about Kerberos integration and about security in general. 
uh, what uh, security is always important for clusters. So uh, many customers are eager to have your cluster secured or something like that. Uh, and moreover, security always important, not just for clusters, but for Sahara itself. Um, what we did in Newton, we implemented a new ability to uh, provide for user ability to create secured cluster by Kerberos. So you can pre-configure uh, MIT KDC server, uh, or just use uh, that MIT K uh, KDC server that provisioned by Sahara. Uh, and then your cluster can be secured by Kerberos. We also re-implemented Uzikli on that so that it can support uh, authentic authentication to uh, KDC server. We're managing tickets so that um, uh, Sahara can easily run job as always. We also support that for Spark job executions, and we distribute uh, all case uh, for system users like HDFS, Yarn, and so on. Uh, this feature is also supported in Ambari and Cloud Error Manager plugins, but for others, it's still in progress. Uh, an additional note that, uh, that uh, when using the Kerberos secured clusters, you, you need to be sure that you have latest Hadoop Swift jars uh, provisioned on top of your nodes of cluster to be sure that you have correct integration uh, with Swift if you use Swift data source. And how it looks like from UI, you, sen you can just uh, take another checkbox to enable security for your cluster. You can also uh, specify your IP address for KDC server. Um, okay, for uh, admin principle, uh, password for admin user, so that Sahar will be able to uh, provision additional users which are required for cluster operations. Uh, and some words about uh, security for Sahara itself. We have uh, bandit tests for peer commit to validate security uh, issues in Sahara code. And additionally, one note, uh, we, have we have implemented secu secured, uh, secured secret storage using Barbican and Castellan in previous releases, so you can use that to store secrets which are created by Sahara during the cluster deployment. Okay, let's switch to the generation session. Cool, so you, know, you may have detected the theme that Sahara is actually pretty full featured at this point. Uh, and at this point, we're really drilling down and trying to make what we have already better with the, the health checks, you know, now enabling security. Um, and part of this, you know, overall theme of our current work was that we had some problems uh, in previous iterations of Sahara related to image generation. Um, really, we have three basic flows that touch image generation in some ways. Um, first, we had pre-Nova spawn image packing. So this is where we use Sahara image, image elements and Dib to sort of pre-pack an image to register in Glance, to register to Sahara, to spin up your cluster. Um, fair enough. We also had a case in which after Nova spawn, users might want to take a clean OS image without Hadoop prepacked onto it um, and spin up a cluster from that. So we wanted the plugin to be able to act on those nodes to configure them appropriately to run Hadoop. Um, and finally, uh, you'll know, before we had really two image flows that were relevant to image manipulation, but there were secretly, secretly three, because we really should have had the plugins validating the images that you were actually giving to them to catch errors early uh, and to make sure that it could sort of spit out reasonable things, uh, you know, if it didn't happen to find some Uzi dependency uh, instead of failing somewhere 
mysteriously. So, um, so there were a few problems with that. First off is we had huge duplication of logic. You know, we had to maintain essentially the same logical flow in Sahara image elements for the packing side as we did in the server for the clean image generation, for the clean cluster generation. Um, and the, that had to be expressed both in Dib and in Python. Um, so that was very difficult to actually keep in sync. There were a, a lot of persistent errors around that. Um, we didn't have validation much at all, as I said. So, you know, if you had a, an error related to image generation and they did come up uh, because Sahara image elements was versioned separately from the Sahara server, um, so you sort of had two components of each plugin application versioned completely differently. Um, and finally, of course, you know, related to that, it's just kind of poor encapsulation to have a plugin model in which all of the image building requirements are still in you know, one monolithic repository for the entire project. And a lot of projects in OpenStack do this. You know, Sahara certainly isn't the only one, um, but fundamentally we, we didn't like the pattern. It makes our whole architecture less pluggable, um, less you know, versioned well together uh, and harder to maintain. Um, so our dream implementation, what, you know, the shining city on the hill that we want to aim at is that all of these flows share the same logic. Um, you know, we have one def definition that does all these three things. Um, we want to store and version image manipulation technology within the plugins. Uh, we still want the user to be able to generate these images via CLI and register them, uh, but we also really want an API so that the user can just click a button and say, I want an image for this plugin, make it for me and it will. Uh, and that's been difficult with previous tech. Um, and we also really want both dev test cycles and user retries um, to be rather quick and painless. This hasn't really been true with Dib in the past, um, and we wanted a better uh, development cycle um, for, for ourselves and our customers. Um, so we came up with a plan, um, which is basically we're going to first build a, va a validation engine that ensures that images meet a specification. We had a YAML-based spec definition that the plugins could say, yes, this, this image, in fact, meets my spec. Uh, we then extended that image to optionally instead modify those images um, and bring them up to speed instead of just testing them. Uh, we wanted to build a CLI to expose this then create and test specifications for each plugin that actually supported this. Um, once we had that across all plugins, we could go ahead and deprecate Sahara Im image elements once it's stable, uh, and then build that API to sort of spawn a clean image environment, which we know is going to work, do a reliable process in it, build, build your image from a base image, push it back into Glance, and have the thing be done. Uh, this is where we are. Um, so, you know, we're, we actually have the full abstraction built. This, this image generation CLI works today. You can build an image specification in this language. It'll pack it for you. Um, the methods to validate um, and to modify images on the server side are there. Um, they haven't been implemented for each plugin yet. That takes a significant amount of testing. Um, so this is really where we're at now. Um, so, but this is about what it looks like. Um, so up here you can see that you've got you know, a set of arguments so that you can make your image packing language configurable, however you wish to. Um, and then you've got a set of validators. And those validators will either test or modify, as you specify uh, in the original call. Um, you know, we, we're really going for item potence with this. One problem with Dib is that the retry cycle was rather arduous uh, because Dib doesn't really aim for item potence much at all. Um, so item potence is a big goal. Um, you know, all the all the validators that we're writing um, have sort of item potence enforced. If you we do have a script validator, so you can just run your own bash code. If you do, really, please keep it item potent. You're going to like your life a lot more if you do. Um, and then we also have some logical control operators, you know, like any and all. You can switch on OS. You can switch on um, arguments that you specify, uh, just to give yourself a little bit more control over the logical flow. Um, this is the fundamental CLI that was built. There's the Sahara image pack call that's built into Sahara now. 
Um, you give it a base image, you give it a plugin and a version, um, and any arguments that you want to give it. Um, some nice features of this is that, you know, if you build your YAML, uh, it'll actually auto-generate the CLI help text uh, for you. Um, it is idempotent. It modifies images in place. So if something fails, you can change your, script, your, your YAML and run it again. And hopefully it'll succeed on the same thing, but it won't do any of the intervening steps again because they're done. Um, it does allow freeform bash scripts. It also allows more structured resources. We really built it to try to be as extensible as possible. So you can use our stuff or, or map in your own uh, sets of validators if you want to do something crazy that we haven't imagined. Uh, please contribute it back if you do. We, we're all very excited about that. Um, and there is, of course, also a test only mode. Um, if you don't want to change your image, you just want to validate it and nothing else. Um, so what it's doing is that this images module that we wrote is running a se this sequence of steps against a remote machine. Um, on the server side, it's using the same Sahara SSH remote as we've always used. Um, but on the image packing side, it's actually using a, a libguestfs Python API image handle. Um, I don't want to get into the holy war between libguestfs and dib that, that ever rages. Um, you know, they, they are both supported uh, officially in the OpenStack community. We really went with libguestfs because it gave us this option to feed the same logic through in Python on both sides. Um, that's, that's our use case and, and why we chose this technology fundamentally. Um, but because we have that, um, you know, we can actually achieve our goal of unifying these flows, having clean OS image generation, cluster gem generation, image packing, and validation all actually using the same logic. Um, so if you're Im interested in image generation, you want to get involved, you want to see what this looks like, um, we are actively implementing in O. Um, please contact me and, and get involved. Um, but this is, this is coming up quite soon. Um, and I'm going to turn it over to Nikita now to talk about bare metal, which everybody is always excited about all the time. Um, because who needs virtualization anymore? It's all bare metal in containers now, don't you know? Yeah. OK, thank you. So the bare metal clusters, uh, yeah, so why they're really important in the first place is because the big data workload or orchestrators or frameworks or job types or whatever you can imagine in a big data world, they have all originated from the bare metal installations. So having this capability in OpenStack uh, was just a matter of time that we should have supported the workloads on bare metal. What we provide with Sahara and bare metal together is the quick cluster scalability and the uh, priority over the scalability and persistence can be managed as well. So in this case, we're uh, providing the best performance by design. So you own your hardware and you know how to configure it to get the best performance. Sahara will not touch its configuration. And uh, uh, there is no, obviously, no virtualization overhead. Uh, there is no virtualized storage on a network that can be bottlenecked due to poor configuration or missing options. So that's why you get the best performance out of uh, Ironic and Sahara for the data processing. And still, uh, Ironic is, backed, is a backend to the Nova provision in API, so the ability to manage your uh, Sahara bare metal cluster is basically the same as you would do with the VMs, and it will stay uh, the same in most points with the uh, data processing engine and with the provision engine as well. So I'll go through comparing some uh, major points. Why would you choose uh, one or another? So if you are in the place choosing to run virtual machines or bare metal clusters, what, where should you go? And, uh, and the points here to cover are how flexible you want a cluster to be. So if you just want to have a persistent, long-running data cluster, then you probably are going to have it on Ironic and bare metal if you still don't have it there. If you want to quick running, fast provision in virtualized clusters, then you should go for VMs and correctly tune your flavors and other settings. Then if you're very uh, targeted to the 100% host utilization, then again, bare metal is your choice because uh, you're in control of the 
host operating system, you're in control of the raw devices and you can uh, uh, install your drivers and utilize them as hard as you can. While on the uh, virtual machines, it's more depending on the hypervisor you use, but, but in default reference KVM architecture, uh, you will be committed to the memory overhead because uh, KVM-based virtual machines consume more overhead than they have uh, committed memory. And you also will be facing the uh, CPU and network uh, overheads due to the abstraction layer between the real device and the virtual device in your virtual machine. Um, the major point uh, of all the big data workloads is uh, about the data locality, and data locality is important if you're going to the batch processing more, like, more than streaming. Uh, the data locality was built into Hadoop distribution since its very early releases, and it was a multi-level algorithm that was passing the uh, device handlers directly to the uh, Java process and then directly to the MapReduce tux, which was giving a huge boost in performance rather than randomly reading from the disks. So data locality is, of course, bestly achieved on the bare metal, but if you configure your virtual machines to use the single block device driver and you use the uh, correct scheduling options to fit your VMs and volumes on the same compute nodes, the same effect can be achieved if you still have this uh, memory and CPU commitments okay. And the maybe one of the last but also important points here is the live migration support. So right now we have to say that there is no way to live migrate an ironic host or the compute host completely. If you lose the host, you lose all the disks and the compute power of it. So uh, be prepared for that. As for the virtual machines, it again depends on your backends for the hypervisor and for your storage. But in most reference uh, architectures with KVM, Ceph, or LVM backends, they support replication and they support live migration without any data loss or sometimes even with a very small downtime of this node. And also a, an important point to be mentioned in the live migration and host loss scenario is that actually the Hadoop-based frameworks are built by design with this in mind and they can handle the uh, uh, loss of the host on their level. So probably the bare metal part is not very critical if you lose a host, just make sure that you have configured your cluster right and you have the proper replication set for it. Uh, and uh, as I've already said that uh, running bare metal clusters with Tahari is almost as simple as running the VMs. It is not different at all from the user's perspective. However, it is different in some points for administrator or operator, cl cloud operator perspective. So. It's very important to place the hosts into their uh, availability zone or separate them with other metadata so that Ironic can schedule properly on this node with its own flavor. This requires special metadata to be set and it is not Sahara's feature to set that metadata. So please be aware of that. Uh, the second point is that uh, storage is not backed by Cinder when you are running bare metal. So Sahara will discover the disks on the compute host for you. It will attach them, mount and format for HDFS, but uh, you will not see and you will not manage them through the OpenStack API anymore. So if you still want to have some more smart management like uh, separates uh, the disks between HDFS and non-HDFS workloads, there are cloud managers, uh, there are Hadoop managers like Cloud Air Manager and Ambari that can do that, and please use them in this case. Also, Sahara is provisioning bare metal servers with the images built with Disk Image Builder or our new build image mechanism, but all these approaches uh, are basing the distribution on the cloud-based operating systems. And if your hardware is running some something non-standard or requires non-standard drivers, they will be missing obviously in these images and the administrator or the operator of cloud should care about that and should update the images properly so that the hardware is utilized then. And the network tenant installation is, uh, is always a hard question when it comes to bare metal and ironic. It, is, it has a good progress in Newton release and right now there are also manual switch configurations available to make this uh, tenant separation work, but in the default setup, uh, you should be prepared that you will have the flat network across the 
uh, your compute hosts, and they will be reachable from one another independent on which OpenStack tenant you run your cluster in. So we have also some few updates which are not that large like our features with Kerberos or health checks, but we still think they're worth mentioning and we've got them implemented in Uton. Uh, so there are a uh, few services that we have new integration with. One of the most important is the DNS solution with Designate. Uh, Sahara now can uh, provision the clusters not based on the fixed IPs that uh, were spread manually, almost manually across the nodes, but now the proper domain name resolution service can help uh, building large clusters without any issues. Uh, the API improvements include the management and the UX uh, pagination and iteration over the list of instances, which now allow users to see a thousand node Hadoop cluster in Horizon, which they previously could not because of the, too much data to be loaded. The plugin operation actually now allows to separate the different plugins for different tenants and disable unneeded plugins if those are for some reason not supposed to be used in this environment. Of course, we have the newest plugin versions supported as to the Newton release, which are HTTP 2.4, MAPAR, uh, yeah, MAPAR 5.2, CDH 5.7, and the latest release of Vanilla plus Spark, which now are now the no, not more separate plugins. They have been combined under a single Apache plugin and can run both job types which were previously separated. So a few more improvements to the uh, uh, testing framework which is now available and can validate any Sahara installation with uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, health and cluster check readiness and the output is now more pretty formatted so the user can see on which of the steps or on which of the checks the cluster is failing and can find the issues directly from the test output and not ra rather not going to the Sahara logs and seeing through the bunch of a strange output. Uh, the Tempest plugin is also growing to support the CLI and more test coverage on the CLI and API of Sahara and Sahara now is publishing to the PyPy, so Sahara tests are now publishing to the PyPy. So you can run the package version of our test, download them, and install and validate your Sahara installation on most of the plugins and distributions. And actually, these are all the highlights and features that we wanted to hint your own Newton release, so we're very glad you have come to our late sessions and welcome with your questions. I'll repeat a question. Yeah, we've, okay. Okay. we've been told that it'll probably carry. Okay. Um, that's, that's the latest on, word. On the ironic integration, is that like, are you going through Nova to, uh, to do it, or are you going directly to ironic? Okay, the question is, uh, are we calling Nova to boot ver uh, bare metal service, or are we going to ironic directly? Right now, we are going to Nova. Actually, we're building a heat template for provisioning all our sources, and the heat resource name is still OS Nova server, so which is backed by the ironic server in the proper availability zone and flavor. Okay, then, if we don't have any questions, uh, I just wanted to uh, leave this uh, useful set of links that you can learn about Sahara and its new features and the specs we're right now working on. Thank you.